We're going live. We'll get everything lined up here in just a moment so that we're on all of the pages live. It's great to be with you. What a beautiful morning. We have clouds hanging over the tops of the mountains, a little mist, misty rain over the lake. It's a beautiful morning. Looking forward to uh, a little bit more moisture as we get that lake filled up before uh, boating begins at the end of this month. Thanks everybody for joining us this morning. We're going to jump right into this topic and see if I can't serve you. I've been dealing with an interesting topic and I don't know that it's unique. Uh, so I'm going to send it out there and see how everyone responds to it this morning. It'd be really important if we got a little bit of uh, yeah, you're talking to me. <laughs> if this is true, just let us know in the chat that this is something that is uh, important to you. The question is, what do you want? And as importantly, why? Why? Because sometimes we chase what we want, and we chase it, and we chase it, and we chase it, and we get it, and it didn't deliver what we thought it would. And if we have to work really hard to get there, Sometimes we have to work really hard to stay there and become very disillusioned. That can happen in so many areas of our lives. For an example, let's take our physical bodies. We can work really hard to get down to the ideal weight, and we're exercising, and we're, we're doing things we've just never done before, and we're doing them consistently, and boy, we're grinding it out, and we're feeling so good, and we're promising ourselves, I will never ever go back to where I was and then a few months later we wake up and something's happened it's like we were asleep or in a coma and we put a few pounds back on and now we're discouraged and overwhelmed and frustrated same thing can happen if you're starting a business and you just work day and night, seven days a week if you need to, whatever it takes, and you build and you build and you build and you build and you build, and, you build. and you're hoping to get to this point because that point is going to be, oh, you get to breathe a little bit. And it's a little bit like when Paul said a couple of weeks ago in one of our sessions, it's like learning how to brush our teeth so well that we never have to brush our teeth again because <laughs> that arrival didn't deliver what we thought arrival would deliver. Sometimes in our relationships, we watch movies. Ramona and I watched the chick flick yesterday for Mother's Day, late in the afternoon, after everything was all settled down, curled up there and put on Message in a Bottle. What a great movie. Very romantic movie. Just awesome. Um, but boy, does that put pressure on everyone to bring that kind of romance all the time to a relationship. And I found after 46 years of marriage, there are some wonderful, beautiful, tender moments. But most of us just living in deep appreciation for each other's gifting and contribution and peace in our home. If we have that expectation of needing to perform at that level all the time, wow, the older you get, the more interesting that could become. So relationships are expectations. Now, parenthetically, someone may be this listening today in a very painful relationship. I'm not talking about something where someone's abusive. All, all, all bets are off if that's the case. But in a normal relationship, a relationship has work to it. A relationship is give and take and love and forgive and ask for forgiveness. It has all of those pieces that make this journey so rich and beautiful. As the years compound, they turn into decades. We begin to build something that when you look and you go, I would never want to do anything that would harm this. And then you just pray every day that you'll be strong enough not to. 
but it's not charging ahead, it's living in. And sometimes that's the piece that gets us in trouble. Why do I, what do I want and why often has this answer, because I don't like what I have. That can be in a relationship, that can be in a business, that can be in finances, it can be in a lot of places in our lives. The very first thing we're going to want to explore and what do I want is the why. And what would happen if I became deeply grateful for what I have? Yes. That's not saying I'm going to settle for that. But if we don't become grateful for what we currently have, no matter what we get, we won't be grateful. We believe we will be. It's like the person who says, I don't have any money to give, so I can't give. I don't have enough. And I know that person, no matter how much money they make, they'll never have enough to give because they'll always have needs that need to be met first. And after the needs are met, there's no money left to give. If we're not giving when we don't have, we won't give when we do. If we're not grateful for what we have, we won't be grateful for what we get. Now I'm getting a little bit older. <laughs> I don't want to take the wind out of anyone's sail because I believe, as Og said, in scroll four, I'm here for a purpose. That purpose is to grow into a mountain. I quote this often, grow into a mountain, not to shrink to a grain of sand. Henceforth, I'll apply all my efforts to become the highest mountain of all, and I will strain my potential until it cries for mercy. The secret that I found is this. We take our current circumstances, our current circumstances, whatever they might be, our relationships, our finance, our business, our health, whatever they might be, and we choose me. This isn't about making it about me. That's a very different dialogue. This is about choosing what I have. I choose me. This fundamental decision is critical if we're going to build, because if we choose what we have, and then we take what we have, and we magnify it, and we create the most we can with it, we're supposed to want more. I've shared this with you. We're supposed to want more, but more of what? More of the clay we have. It's been uniquely designed for us, our life. I choose me. No, 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 but Dave, you don't understand. I want their house. I want their car. I want their business. I want their the spouse like they have. No, 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 no. They're not yours. We can't covet that. We are to choose our clay and then begin the meticulous, detailed work of creating the most we can with the clay we've been given. And if we show gratitude for what we currently have, one of the things we discover are there are some things in there that we just weren't valuing. Our natural gifting, some tenderness that occurred that we didn't see, some opportunities we weren't looking for inside our own clay. We start to embrace our gifting. Am I an extrovert? Am I an introvert? Am I a talker? Am I a listener? Am I scared? Have I got fears that I'm going to want to really examine and overcome to get to the next level of my life? See, Og didn't say, I'm here for a purpose, and that purpose is to have the biggest house, the biggest boat, the biggest car, the biggest bank account of all. No, he said we're to strain our potential. We're to become all that we're meant to be as a human being. And all of those other things are natural outcomes of our becoming. And it's the only place, oh, please, my friends, it's the only place where we start to find real joy in this journey by taking our clay, owning it, 
and stop comparing it to everybody else's and wishing it was different, wanting that. No, let's take this and create what it can create. What can it create in terms of health? What can I create in terms of my relationship? What can I create in terms of a business? And keep at least a little bit of balance in my life, time for my wife, for my children, for my grandchildren, to be able to attend those important events and not miss them. How can I do this? Am I talking to anyone this morning? This isn't about pulling back and not doing. This is not about slowing down to quit, or acquiesce, give up, give in. And that's not any of that. It's just a different focus for pushing and creating. It's not about getting bigger and better. It's about becoming all that we're meant to be. Now, I've met some amazing human beings who at one point in their life were in very challenging circumstances. Incredible stories. Filled with heart and compassion and love and sacrifice. Someone who might work all day so that he can work like in a youth ministry in the evening. And then on Saturdays and Sundays, yet working night shifts at a like a UPS or a FedEx or a Walmart and shipments till early hours of morning only to come home and shower and go back to a full-time job so that he can minister in the evenings. Sometimes families have health challenges with children or with each other, and they just push through. My dear friend Chad Hymas, quadriplegic, who speaks all over the world, and when he couldn't speak, he builds a 16,000-square-foot lodge on a ranch out in the middle of nowhere in West Utah and invites the world to come there, corporations to come there. I was traveling around his ranch in his Dodge Caravan, which was, was his very first car suited for him to drive in his wheelchair as a quadriplegic. It's just amazing. He has to be brought into the car, set into the seat, kind of strapped in, and then he can drive. This thing has bumpers falling off the front and falling off the back and dents all over it because we're driving it down this dirt road on this ranch. He wanted to show me some of the things that he had created. Now he has the work done by others, but he just, he's there with them and experiencing it with them. And these old cabins, 150 year old cabins that he's restored and, and these cattle, the cattle wandering around and horses. And he says, yes, this isn't a ranch to raise animals. This is a ranch to raise people. <laughs> I, just, I just love him to push through with such tenacity. People do incredible things who at one point in their life were in a place of discouragement or overwhelm or frustration and just made the decision to create the most they could with what they had. I think of Chad. If Chad had tried to create something else, instead of becoming one of the youngest members of the National Speakers Hall of Fame, delivering 300 speeches a year, 500,000 miles a year, traveling by himself, three heavy suitcases, always some there to help him get to the next level. Unbelievable. I can mention Chad. I don't want to mention anyone else by name. But I have the privilege of working with many of these people as a coach who at one time were in a place of hopelessness. And instead of spending their life frustrated, overwhelmed, discouraged, overworked, trying to get what somebody else had, they chose to become all that they were meant to be. And as they focused here and they created, they actually created more by being focused here and many of them are living incredible lives. And it's not based on the money they're making or the homes they're living in or the cars they're driving. I think Chad is happiest in that beat up Dodge Caravan than he has almost any other vehicle. 
just the freedom to be able to drive around on this massive ranch of his and just sit and look in awe. He was on the phone giving directions to one of the farmhands who was firing up the irrigation system in one of the pastures. And then we drove by and stopped and there he was, the guy he's talking to and the sprinkler was now working and he's giving him directions about how many turns to turn the water. It was incredible. I just, I wanted to cry. I had to ask myself, what am I creating with what I've been given? What am I creating? Because when we focus here and we see clearly what I want is to create this and the next millimeter is this inspired idea, create the millimeter and celebrate. Create the millimeter and celebrate. Create the next millimeter and celebrate. Can you feel this sequence? Because most of us are shooting for something, believing if we get there, we can then celebrate and feel that. And it never delivers. Never. Oh, maybe for a short season. Maybe for a short season. But it doesn't deliver long term. What delivers is taking what we have, creating, celebrating, creating, celebrating, living in a celebration, living in creation, taking what we've been giving and creating the most we possibly can with it. And I know I've shared this before on a Monday morning, but one of the great secrets to this principle is that there's no power in the universe who'll give you more of something you do not want. Conversely, when we magnify the gifting we've been given, we're given more clay. Yeah, we can be trusted with it. And then we can take it and magnify it and get more clay and magnify it. Every great story, every hero's journey starts at a really dark place. If you're there today, don't be focused on gigantic things. Get some really simple goals between here and there, these simple goals. Get some simple ones and execute and focus on an inspired idea about how to do that more effectively. Don't push faster than you have strength or try to go further than you can walk without being totally exhausted because the next morning you're going to want to wake up again refreshed and excited to do the same thing again. And if you were worn totally out at the end of the previous day, your brain's going to remember that the next morning. And it's going to have a hard time getting started. That's why when we push so hard, we only could do it so long, and all of a sudden we just can't do it. The brain just shuts us down. We want to do predictable steps. We can, in, we can increase our tolerance for goal creation and dream creation in the time. It's not to slow down your dreams. It's actually to help you get there. It's to help you take what you have and create the most you can with it and love the entire journey while you're doing it. So wherever you end up, it feels like a natural and wonderful place to be. You don't have to kill yourself to stay there. It's your new mediocre which means halfway up the ragged and jagged mountain. You're halfway up there. Now make a step and make it your new mediocre. Another step, make it your new mediocre. Another step and make it your new mediocre. Don't link slingshot to the top because if you do, you cannot sustain it. And you'll be terribly disillusioned and often come flying back past where you were and be in a deficit. So take your clay. I choose me. I choose me. Oh, sometimes. I know in my life, I haven't wanted to choose me. Sometimes because of things I had done. Sometimes because of mistakes I had made. Sometimes because the way things turned out. I don't didn't, didn't want that. But when you take that clay and choose it, and you begin to create, and you start to find joy in that journey. Now you found a great secret of life.
great secret of life. Now you can sustain it, be grateful for it, and find joy in it. Okay, so what do you want? Why? So I can get somewhere so I don't have to do this anymore? Hmm, not a good reason. Because I'll feel better about myself when I get there? Hmm, probably not a very good reason. Let's examine the why we want as much as the what we want. And then let's begin by taking our clay and creating with it. And just seeing what we can create. There's probably very few things as rewarding as knowing. And I would say with the help of God above, taking whatever he's given me and creating the most I can with it in a sustainable manner. Oh, that makes for a sweet partnership and true joy in the journey. Have some fun with this. Let's get really honest. I think that's what COVID's done for all of us. It's created space for us to get really honest with ourselves. Why am I chasing that? And let us stop chasing and focus on becoming. Not only will we get there sooner, we can actually find joy and gratitude in being there. Everybody all set for this? Thanks for your time this morning. It's great to be with you. I love these moments. May you have a wonderful and blessed week.